Welcome to a screencast on calorimetry and chemical reactions. So a little bit of a, a summary and a couple things to note. Calorimetry is the study of heat transfer in chemical reactions. And the basic idea is we calculate the heat of a reaction or of a process by measuring temperature changes of the contents of the calorimeter and then doing the appropriate calculations to determine the measure or value of interest, uh, which typically is going to be a heat or energy uh, type of, sub of, of uh, value. Now, in an ideal situation, we have no heat that's lost when the reaction occurs in the calorimeter, and the Q of the reaction and the Q of the calorimeter are equal to each other, but opposite in sign, so Q reaction equals negative Q calorimeter. In the real world, there is some heat lost, and either we accept that and uh, we have some error in our um, values, or we get very careful about finding ways to track the lost heat and account for it in our calculations. And in this class, uh, we will do the former. We'll just have some error that uh, we will know we have approximate results. Now, chemists can use something known as a bomb calorimeter to make very accurate measurements, typically of combustion reactions. We have, in a bomb calorimeter, a very beefy, thick-walled steel container. We put a sample of something we'd like to combust or burn inside of that, fill it with oxygen at a fairly high pressure, and then submerge this in a big container filled with water and uh, have a stirrer to mix things up and a thermometer to measure the temperature. And then we have uh, typically some a way to ignite the sample, so some ignition wires, and we put a little, uh, little spark through the sample, get it to start burning. It burns, it gives off energy. The energy from the reaction is absorbed by the solution. And then from the temperature change of the solution and also of the piece of the, the metal uh, canister, uh, we do the calculation that eventually lets us determine how much energy was given off per, let's say, gram of food or whatever it was we were uh, interested in. And in general chemistry labs, students typically use coffee cup calorimeters to perform the experiments. In this case, the reacting mixture takes, uh, the reaction takes place inside the coffee cup and these are simply not as accurate as bomb calorimetry experiments because there's just more heat transfer between the reacting mixture and the surroundings. And so we simply accept that we have less uh, accurate measurements or values. Well, let's do an example of a calorimetry calculation for a chemical reaction. And here we have sulfuric acid and sodium hydroxide mixed together. Uh, those two will react. They'll neutralize each other, make a salt and water. And we are asked to determine the heat of reaction for this uh, reaction per mole of sulfuric acid, which is typically what's done. Heats of reaction or energies for reaction are typically done on a per mole basis. So let's proceed. And a couple things to note. We have a solution of sulfuric acid and of sodium hydroxide. We know their volumes and their concentrations, and we know the initial and final temperatures of each. Now, to determine heat, we're going to use Q equals MC delta T, and we're going to need to make a few approximations. So in our Q equals MC delta T, the mass of our solution is going to be the sulfuric acid and the sodium hydroxide mixed together because both of those things are going to be reacting and both of those things are going to be absorbing energy. So 125 milliliters of solution and 150 milliliters of solution is about 275 milliliters of solution. And since the solutions are aqueous, then they have densities of approximately 1.0, and so we can say that we have about 275 grams of solution. Specific heat of solution, well, the closest thing we know is the specific heat of water, 
And so we will treat these solutions as if they have approximately the same specific heat as water. And then the temperature change is fairly straightforward. So we have 275 grams of solution that's absorbing energy. And notice these are the, the in the solution are the things that are actually reacting as well. We treat the solution as if it's water, so 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius for its specific heat. And then final minus initial temperature gives us 10,740 joules, and it's a positive value, which means that the mixture absorbed energy. Now that's a pretty big number, so we might want to make it kilojoules. This is fairly typical. Uh, so this is 10.74 kilojoules. And then we note that our temperature difference has only two significant figures. Therefore, our answer here, our Q for the mixture, should only have two significant figures. And so it's 11 kilojoules, positive 11 kilojoules. Now, that 11 kilojoules of energy uh, or of heat, it's a positive value. It means energy was absorbed by the mixture. And the energy that was absorbed by the mixture was given off by the reaction. And so the Q of our solution or Q of our mixture is going to equal the opposite in sign, but hopefully the same value as our Q of reaction. So our Q of reaction is negative 11 kilojoules. Now note, this is the amount of energy that the reaction gave off, but we want the heat of reaction per mole of sulfuric acid. So what we need to do is see how much sulfuric acid we have and also how much NaOH we have and in fact check to see if either one of those is the limiting reactant. So the reaction that takes place, acid-base reaction between H2SO4 and NaOH, it has a 2 to 1 stoichiometry. We can determine the amount of sulfuric acid that we started with by doing the volume times the molarity, so liters times moles per liter gives us moles of sulfuric acid. We do the same thing but using the values for sodium hydroxide and that gives us 0 0.450 moles of NaOH as compared to the 0 0.250 moles of H2SO4. And now we note that if we have 0.45 moles of NaOH and it reacts on a 1 to 2 stoichiometric basis with the, so with the sulfuric acid, then the 0 0.450 moles of NaOH requires 0.225 moles of H2SO4 to react with it. So that's how many moles of H2SO4 are needed. But we note that we actually have 0 0.250 moles of H2SO4. So there's more sulfuric acid available than is needed for the reaction, which means that the sulfuric acid is the excess reactant, the sodium hydroxide is limiting, and so when the 0.450 moles of sodium hydroxide has fully reacted, only 0.225 moles of sulfuric acid will have reacted, and there will be some excess sulfuric acid that is not able to react because there's no sodium hydroxide and no more sodium hydroxide around for it to react with. So to do this heat of reaction on a per mole basis, what we have is there were 11 kilojoules of energy given off, so negative 11 kilojoules, per 0.225 moles of sulfuric acid that actually reacted, and that gives us negative 49 kilojoules per mole of sulfuric acid that reacted. And the interpretation would be if one mole of sulfuric acid reacts with two moles of sodium hydroxide, then 49 kilojoules of energy would be given off in that process. And notice that heats of reaction are going to be proportional to amount of reacting substance. And that's it for the introduction to calorimetry. And that's it for the calorimetry and chemical reactions screencast.